So in one of my previous videos, we looked at how to set up your local environment ready for you to spin up your Flutterflow project on your local machine, fire it up into the iOS simulator, just to test it, just to make sure that everything is working as you expect before you submit it to the App Store. Now in this particular video, I'm gonna show you how to very simply connect your Flutterflow project up to GitHub, which you can then make the changes in Flutterflow. You keep pushing them to GitHub, and then you can keep pulling them down to your local machine and keep testing them until you're absolutely happy. So there's a number of steps involved, it's really quite straightforward, let's get into the video. So the first step is a really, really simple one. If you haven't done it already, please head over to github.com and create yourself an account. Just go up to the right hand side here, click sign up and then just follow the wizard and then you'll get yourself a GitHub account and then that will then allow you to then store your Flutterflow projects up with inside GitHub and of course you can have multiple projects if you would like and then of course we're then going to then carry out a number of steps in order to pull our project down to our local machine from GitHub. So go ahead and do that and then we'll move on to the next step. So I'm now back in Flutterflow and I've got my project loaded. Of course, your project can be any project you would like. I'm gonna use my trusty QR code project here for this particular demonstration. So one of the habits you need to get into, of course, is making sure that, um, for me, your GitHub repository name, so this is the name that where you are gonna push your code to on GitHub, kind of matches the name of your Flutterflow project. So the habit that I like to get into is up the top left here. You can see here, mine's project's called Q underscore R underscore code underscore custom underscore widget. So that is the name of the repository that I'm now going to create over at GitHub. So if I'm not going to be able to GitHub now, I'm just going to click here and um, what you need to do is also sign into github you should end up at the dashboard here and um, to the top left here you can see we've got to start a new repository so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a private repository so this is just private to myself it's not public it's not in the public domain and i'm just going to go in here and i'm just going to paste my project name in here you can see here this matches now the flowflow project and i'm going to say create new repository so it's as simple as that, simply created, that's it, but we're not done yet. We're gonna to need to now go back over to Flutterflow and just follow a few extra steps. Let's go and do that now. So we've inside Flutterflow. I'm now gonna move over to the top right developer menu here, this option here, just choose that. And you can see we've got this option here called connect a GitHub repo. If you just connect that, uh, well actually click on it and then say, uh, and then what we're gonna do now is we're now gonna to want to associate our repo. So one of the steps that we also need to do is we need to install this Flutterflow GitHub app. This is just gonna allow us to uh, provide extended functionality to Flutterflow in order to actually work with inside your actual GitHub repository. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna click this little GitHub option here. I'm just gonna choose that. It's gonna take me to a new page and now I need to actually install this. So just hit the install. And now it's come up with this option here, I can actually choose the repositories that I would like to associate this app with. Now I'm going to associate it to the one that we just created. So here I'm going to choose only select repositories, drop down the list here, and I'm going to choose the one that I've just created here. Let me just scroll down. This QR code custom widget, just choose that and hit the install option. And that's it, that's all I need to do. So what I can now do is I can now go back to this particular repository. So if I go back to the repository itself, so let's go here, back to the Digital Pro Personal account here, and I go to my repositories, and we've got this one at the top here, just choose that one there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna now copy this particular option, this particular URL, this is what I need. I need to copy this now. So just click on the little copy option here, go back over to Flutterflow and let's just now paste that actually into here. So just paste that in and then say associate repo. Now, of course, this step is gonna be important. If you didn't do that, then of course it will come up with a particular error and then very, very shortly it will come up with a success message to say that it's actually now uh, connected the actual repo. There we go, it's got a little success there at the bottom. So we are now all good. So now what we can do is we can now push our project code to GitHub. So I'm just gonna hit this little push to repository option, just choose that. And I'm, for the very first commit, I'm just gonna say initial commit like that and just say push. Just going to let that do its thing. It's going to take a few moments to push that code up there and then we can then go and have a look at GitHub and actually see it there. In fact, it's just done it there. So let's now move back over to GitHub itself. Let's just hit refresh and you can see that all of our code that is now being pushed in this particular location and we are now good to go. So once that's now up there, we can now follow a number of steps now to actually pull that code down to our local machine. So let's go and do that now. <music> you <laughs> 
If you've been watching a number of videos on my channel, you know I always like to get ourselves up and running really, really quickly. Of course, if you are a power user and you know what you're doing in terms of Git, there's other ways of doing this, but we're gonna use GitHub Desktop. It's gonna allow us to get us where we need to really, really fast. I'm gonna head you over to desktop.github.com. You're gonna land on this particular page and please download a version of GitHub Desktop to your machine. Now you've got some choices here. You've kind of got the Apple Silicon version. So if you're using an Apple Silicon workstation, please choose the Apple Silicon version or of course if you are running or you would like to use an Intel base then please do click on the download for Mac OS you'll get, you'll get like a, a universal edition that you can download as well so hit that download and then let's get this installed so I've already done the actual download itself so I'm just going to bring over a directory here and you can see here this is it. it's in my downloads folder it's called github desktop arm 64 which is for um, uh, Silicon Max which is what I'm running so I'm just going to double click on this it's going to expand the tool and here it is now we don't want to run it from here we want to probably drag and drop this but actually we've inside our applications and on the left hand side here you can just see i've got applications i'm just going to drag that into applications uh, and just replace that because i've got a, another copy there and then now that is now nicely up and running so now i'm going to fire that up and let's move on to the next step Okay, so I've fired up GitHub Desktop on my machine and this is what I'm presented with. I now need to log into this particular tool using my GitHub credentials. So what we need to do is click on the first option here where it says clone a repository from the internet. Just select that. And of course, it's gonna come up here with an option here for me to actually sign in. You should see something very, very similar to this. Hit sign in. And then I'm gonna to continue to my browser because I know that's what I've actually got uh, actually uh, associated. So, it, so what it's done is it's now um, actually connected up to my browser is authenticated me and now I'm presented with my actual repositories now if you look down here in the repositories you should see the one here that we've uh, created this QR code custom widget now what I need to do is I need to actually select that and I'm going to need to then associate a folder on my workstation um, in order for me to be able to pull down that code now if you remember back to my previous video where we were talking about setting up our local environment for our projects I created a folder called git within inside the documents folder. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna place the actual code of this repository in there, okay? So I'm just gonna make sure I've got that selected. And then here you can see that I've got my location to where my Git folder is, and you can see here that it's actually called the directory name, the same as my repository. I'm just gonna hit the clone option now. Off it goes. So that's now gonna bring down all of my details here. And what's really fantastic about this, again, if you've been following my previous video where we installed a Visual Studio Code, it makes it super easy because all I've gotta do is hit on this open in Visual Studio Code option here on the right hand side, just, just choose that. And then here we are with Visual Studio Code up and running. Now, of course, this is a brand new uh, deployment with inside um, the Git folder here. So we are gonna have to run this a pub a get option. So this obviously will require you to have all of the setups from my previous video up and running. And then if you've got that, then you're in a perfect position. So now what we could actually do is as per my previous video, we could now run up the iOS simulator, which we'll do. And then of course we can see this application working. So let's do that now. Let's go up to the search option here let's do a angle bracket and then let's do launch emulator i'm going to choose the ios simulator so that's now going to fire up here on the right hand side if i just move that over here so in just a moment that should pop up there it is okay so the simulator is now running now of course we can now actually you can see down here we've got this connected our, our actual simulator is connected down the bottom which is really really important we can now go up to the top here we can just actually say run without debugging so let's just choose a dart flutter there and then now what's going to happen is our application just as flutterflow would do is now going build our project and of course it will now fire up very very shortly in the ios simulator so let's just leave that to happen i'll come right back once that's done Okay, so there's the application. It's all nicely followed. Um, it's, it's all nicely loaded up there with inside the actual simulator. So we are in a fantastic position. So we've now got all that hooked up. Let's now look at actually how to then make the changes back in Flutterflow and let's just follow the process back to here where we can quickly keep testing this. So let's go and do that now. So back in Flutterflow then, let's make a change to our project. So where it says the text, it says the grand show. Let's just change this and say the Digital Pro Live. Maybe we'll do that one day. Um, and let's just uh, change maybe the date to say the first, actually we'll do the first of August. 
like that there we go just a very very simple change now let's now push this up to github let's move over to the developer menu again let's say a push to repository i'm now just going to put a message in here and i'm going to just going to call this one uh, label changes like this always be uh, very mindful about your commit messages because it's good for tracking history when you make these particular changes so try to put something that is a bit more meaningful in there to the changes that you make hit the push option now that's just going to go and do its thing if i go to the developer menu you can see here that it's pushing to repository now once that is completed um, then we will be able to see the success messages there at the bottom which we've got and then we'll be able to move head over to the actual um the actual repository let's just hit f5 here and you can see now you can see now we've got this label changes uh, message now so you can see here that nothing here has actually changed but something within inside that particular folder has changed if i just click on lib you can see here now if i go to the actual uh, the, the actual pages itself you can see here it has been made there as so i click on the right one <laughs> there it goes so you'll see here this is the code that flutterflow has actually generated and the label change has been applied in there so that's great so that's all there how do we now then pull that down into actual uh, to, to to from from github to our local machine so let's go over and do that now okay so this is probably the most simplest step of the whole video actually so i've just got the github desktop in view here here it is here let's just click on this little option up here fetch origin just choose that and that's now just going to quickly pop up to uh, github and it's going to pull in the change and then with inside our application here i can just do a hot reload and there we go i've just done hot reloading you can see here now those changes have now been applied to my application so of course we can now keep doing this now and we can just keep using this to keep checking okay so just some important points just to put to you and that is that obviously it's a one-way trip so you can't actually make changes on your local development environment and then push those up to github to then see those reflective inside flutterflow itself now um that's okay for to the most part of course it depends on obviously how you are using a flutterflow as a tool um, it could be that you're actually doing a, kind of 90 percent of the development of your flutterflow application with inside the platform itself and then bringing it down to your local machine to do the final 10 percent where you might be putting some additional functionality in or some maybe some customizations that you can't actually do with inside flutterflow itself or you might just be using purely your local desktop just to test your application just to make sure that it runs okay with inside the simulator um, and that's fine so just make sure that that's only a one-way trip that when you're actually doing those type of checks so um that's it for this particular video i hope you found that really really useful um, of course flutterflow is developing as a very very powerful uh, powerful tool of course by the time you're watching this particular video the flutterflow version 4 will probably be released where there's even more uh, functionality with inside flutterflow when it comes to actually doing branching and merging and all that kind of stuff so uh, watch out for a video on that um, but please do like the video please do subscribe to the channel as well because there's so much flutterflow content on there as it is and of course there'll be so much more coming in the future and um, i also appreciate your likes as well that really does help the youtube algorithm and it plus also gets these videos out to the wider community as well so until the next video i'll see you soon